Hello, I'm Rick Cloutier. And I'm Matt Clark. Each year is nuanced in its own way, and 2017 was no different. We witnessed a solar eclipse, a number of natural disasters, the Bitcoin surge, a new administration moved into the White House, the potential for trade wars increased, interest rates rose, and geopolitical tensions escalated. Despite all this, and the fact that stock valuations were already high, 2017 was another great year for stocks. Starting at home, the S&P finished higher for the ninth year in a row, led primarily by the materials, consumer discretionary, and technology sectors. Since 1926, there has only been one other time when the market gained for nine consecutive years, and that was back in the 1990s. Overall strength in the S&P was fueled largely by a pro-business agenda out of Washington, coupled with a weaker dollar. Helped by this, the S&P closed up nearly 22%, with small caps rising over 14%, domestic equity investors were rewarded. International stocks did even better. Developed international equities returned a little over 28%, and emerging market stocks grew just over 37%. That's pretty good. The question, of course, is, will all of this continue? Well, here's a quick wellness check from different areas. Let's start with the U.S. Unemployment is low, manufacturing is strong, GDP continues at around 2.5%, and interest rates, although increasing, are still very low. Then over in the EU, GDP growth is about 2.2% for the year and is expected to be around 2% for next year. At the same time, the number of employed is at an all-time high, while unemployment, which is high by U.S. standards, has fallen to a cyclical low of 9.1%. Now at the moment, because of how much fundamentals have improved over there, the ECB is entertaining the idea of ending its QE program, or quantitative easing. Over in the U.K., they're still realizing growth at the slowest pace of all the G7 countries, and that said, their labor market's strong. There is concern that they're their economy is weakening because of Brexit, but if it is weakening, it's happening very slowly, and that's a good thing. Over in Asia, Japan and China dominated the headlines when North Korea wasn't making waves. From a growth perspective, Japan's showing evidence of turning things around. GDP is up at around 1.7% for the year, but more importantly, they had six consecutive quarters of positive growth, and that hasn't happened since 2001. China continues to worry investors, but things are looking pretty stable over there at the moment. In the short term, soft landing is still very much a reality. GDP is up at 6.8%, inflation at 2.9%, and retail sales at 10%. Longer term, though, their prospects continue to give us pause due to structural problems and high levels of debt. In the rest of Asia, growth is over 4%, and in Latin America, an increase in commodity prices could help commodity exporters like Brazil. So like I said, as a whole, things are looking pretty good. So with growth around the globe looking strong, things are looking up for stocks. Many on the street are expecting double-digit earnings growth again this year. We think that that's a stretch, but possible given the passage of the new tax package. So what could go wrong? Well, the Fed is tightening and removing money from the system. This is never good for stocks. At the same time, as I said before, stocks are really not cheap. The cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio was above 31. And the historic average is about 17. As we said before also, there is good reason for stocks to be above their historic averages. And that's because interest rates are low compared to their historic averages. It's important to remember that we buy stocks based on what we expect them to earn and not on what they have earned. So while the backward looking PE ratio is 31, it's only around 18 when you consider the next 12 months earnings. That compares to an historic average of 15, so it's high. Small caps have a PE ratio of 25, so they're a little more expensive. International stocks are at 15 and emerging market stocks are at 13. So international stocks are cheaper than the US, but they come with higher risk. Now after making the case for stocks, I will close with a note of caution. Generally markets fall when everyone is optimistic. Fear and greed move the markets in the short term, but fear moves it more quickly. Fundamentals only come into play in the longer term. So overall, we see a general tone of complacency, complacency about risk. Because of this, we continue to stress the importance of being well diversified, disciplined, and to invest with a focus on risk management. For more of our perspective on the markets, please visit our blog at watrust.com. And on behalf of Rick and myself, thank you for watching.